If we know for certain that any square number minus 1 or 4 or 9 is composite 100% of the time, then potentially we can find numbers that are a fixed distance from square numbers that are less likely to be composite. We're not going to be creating a prime generating function, but we can play a game of probability to hopefully increase our chances. What I've created here is a simple table where down the left column is a list of even square numbers, and in the next column is the square numbers from the first column minus the number at the top of the second column. Across the top is all of the integers greater than 1. In the middle is a simple calculation. If the number in the second column is evenly divisible by the number at the top of the column, that square gets a 0. If it's anything other than a 0, I've hidden it. For a number in the second column to be a prime in this context, it has to have only one zero in that row, where the number is divisible by itself. You can see that if I change the variable at the top of the second column to a 1, then none of the numbers greater than 3 are prime. Same for other square numbers like 4 and 9 and 16 and so on. Similarly, if I subtract 2, all of the numbers greater than 2 are divisible by 2, and therefore not prime. So we know how to avoid even numbers by not subtracting other even numbers. If the number to subtract is 3, then you can see some of the numbers are prime and some of them aren't. That makes sense because a third of all integers are divisible by 3. At least every third candidate is not prime as they're divisible by 3. You'll also notice though that some of the divisors are just not there. And in the same way that we avoided even numbers by subtracting odd numbers, we've also managed to avoid some of the other divisors entirely. For the divisors that are there, they follow some repeating patterns that continue forever. I'm going to skip ahead here, but you'll see that some non-square numbers like 19 have a lot of possible divisors, where some non-square numbers like 17 have very few. If we're looking to generate numbers that aren't necessarily prime but have a higher likelihood of being prime, then subtracting numbers like 17 or 143 are gold. If we subtract a number like 41, then we can see that 5s regularly get in the way, but they're regular and there are fewer divisors overall. By picking some numbers to subtract, we're effectively concentrating the divisors, so they fall more regularly in some places, but not at all in other places. The number to subtract doesn't necessarily have to be positive. If we subtract minus 1, this is effectively asking Landau's fourth problem about the primes of the form n squared plus 1. There's a lot of even squares that end in 4, so there's a lot of candidates that end in 5. And that corresponds to a high proportion of numbers having 5 as a divisor. I'm going to skip ahead by 150 and you can see that some numbers have more and some have fewer divisors. But then you get to a number like minus 163 and something incredibly interesting happens. All of the divisors smaller than 40 just disappear. There's a lot of numbers along the number line that are divisible by 2 or 3 or 5 or 7 and so on. But this function 4n squared plus 163 misses them all. It also means that the first 20 candidates are all primes. Not only that, but the divisors that are greater than 40 follow an entirely predictable pattern. I'm going to hide the first 20 rows and the first 40 columns so you can see that pattern more clearly. If we look at the divisors across the top starting 41, 43, 47, etc., the divisors come in pairs and are spaced at predictable intervals. The shape of the zeros is parabolic, but on a bit of a diagonal. The divisors repeat, so if you look further down the table from 40 squared, the next number that's divisible by 41 is 122 squared. This second parabola is similar to the one above, but the diagonal is a bit steeper. The third parabola starting at 204 squared is steeper again. On top of all of that, and in what I think is truly a beautiful maths moment, the divisors starting 41, 43, and 47 are two apart, then 4, then 6, then 8, and so on. In fact, the first lot of possible divisors for this function are the numbers generated by Euler's prime generating function k squared minus k plus 41. I think that's awesome. In addition to Euler's divisors, the numbers are sometimes also divisible by other numbers, and particularly other numbers that are in the series. I said before that the calculations in the middle were either a zero if it's evenly divisible or blank if it's something else. But if we look behind the curtain, we show the remainders when we divide by the top row and not just show the zeros, we can see a better idea of what's going on. 
it's a bit of a mess when you're looking just at the numbers, so I'm going to give them a shade of grey depending on how high or low the remainder is. I'm also going to highlight the zeros. How amazing are those parabolic patterns?